Welcome everyone, Marcelo is my name, niche fragrance collector. I'm very honored to have one of my superheroes actually in perfumery. This man here is my early pusher when it comes to all things perfume. All things perfect. Oops. <laughs> Years ago, I went to a uh, masterclass in uh, the city here in Melbourne, and Michael was there. I just was getting into niche perfumery, and you did this elaborate on Clive Christian, and I spent more money than what I should have. Let me just say that. So this man has this amazing power to seduce you with his knowledge of all things perfumery. So this lineup is Michael's recommendation. If you like Rose, or if you like Vetiver, these are the big hitters. Absolutely. Rose is quite an extraordinary fragrance on men in particular. And the selection that I have for you here today really focuses on different aspects of rose. Just how you can capture rose with green notes behind it, with wood notes, and also with spices, and in the case of this beautiful one, which we'll talk about soon, um, incense. Rose, I think Marcello has had a lot of bad press. People look yes. at rose and yeah. think, oh, it's grandma, it's old fashioned, but rose has been elevated to such a, an exquisite level and sophisticated level in perfumery that these are gonna blow the socks off anybody. Now I'm gonna make a recommendation, and that is find your wallet, Hide it somewhere that you're not gonna find because you're gonna be tempted after this video. I'm not that bad. I've warned you, the rest is on you now. So after this, you'll be like, right, I need these fragrances. So Michael, the floor is yours. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna be the student here. What we're going to start with is a fragrance called Juan Manuel. And Juan Manuel graces from Fuella, a South American brand created by Julian Bedel. Julian Bedel is a self-taught and educated perfumer. It's always been a passion for him, chemistry, but also capturing nature. And he's expressing that through these extraordinary fragrances. The notes coming from predominantly the foothills of the Andes Mountains and the Tierra del Fuego in Patagonia. See, already I'm like, I'm, yes, tell me more, Michael. I want to know. So, the fragrances are made in Italy. And what he generally does, he has a note that's sort of the heart of the fragrance. And in this case, it's rose. So he views fragrances almost like a, a celestial body, if you want to call it that. And two notes orbit around this core raw material. And what we're smelling here is rose with pink pepper and geranium. Right. And geranium gives that beautiful green woody Correct. accent to the rose. And the funny thing is, as soon as I sprayed, that pink pepper, that pepper component of it, the sweetness of it, yep. I guess, came bursting out, but that rose was definitely... It's extraordinary. It's the hero, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you mm. have to have this mm. in your olfactive wardrobe, honestly. I love the way Michael, because if, if for those who are familiar with Fuea, you'll see that the way that they do their, um, rather than doing a pyramid. Yeah, they do a different architecture. They, that's right. You see that it, it does look like a planetary sort of yeah, system. Like, a like an orbiting Correct. effect. So what happens is that the rose here obviously plays center stage. Right. But that green note and that woody, spicy, piquant note of pink pepper mm. really pick up elements within the rose itself that are not unlike those two raw materials. Mm. Mm. So rose, if you break rose down, it has many different constituents that makes the scent of rose distinctive. Yes. And what I think it does here is create something neo-metallic. I know that's a very strange way of describing it, but... I think it's the balsamic acidity mm. of the, of the ger mm. green geranium that really makes that rose sing. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? I to totally, absolutely. Michael loves using neo-metallic. I, I, I don't know what that means, other than- It means <laughs> almost metallic. Right, okay. Not quite metallic, but almost there. It mimics, it's a mimicking note of, of a metallic, like an oxide element in rose. This example. man is the expert because for me, all, all I'm getting is rose with pepper, neo-metallic, only for a sophisticated nose. Not at all. Can you smell what I, I'm talking about? Well, what I'm getting from here is definitely the woody yeah. elements of it. I'm definitely getting that pink pepper. 
Um, I do like the greenness or that geranium also coming through, but the rose is center stage. The great thing about this, in my opinion, this is easily a masculine rose fragrance. 100%. Easily female, so a woman can wear a rose, but if you are one of those men who like, oh, I'm still trying to get into it comfortably, those this other elements there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This brand is mm. I love foyer. magnificent. It really is. I think a lot of people know that I love Foyer. So Foyer is one of is an Argentinian brand, and so it's one of those that, are, that really resonate with Fellow me. countrymen. The next one we're going to talk about is created by a seventh generation perfumer. Mm. And his name is Aurelien Guichard. His father is the famous Jean Guichard, who back in the 80s worked on the Lulu project for Cacharel. Mm. And his father is now the creative director for Givadon Perfume House. And his son, Aurelien, purchased a rose farm in Grasse in the south of France. And these are harvested and produced in a way that nurtures the rose and the soil to create these magnificently cultivated organic roses. Incredible. And you can smell the difference. Correct. And this, the magic of this is rose with saffron. Right. And here you get a spicy rose mm -hmm. signature. It's almost neoclassical rose. Correct. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to sound it. <laughs> I'm he's, trying. he's trying. I'm trying, I'm trying. You've got to give him that. <laughs> Sometimes rose gets a bad rap because it's, you know, it, it's been done in cosmetics and it feels a bit grandma-ish. Yeah. So that rose that you're familiar with is here. But then there's this other element. And it could be that saffron like you're saying. This is rose. Jam. A rose bud, mm. I should say, or the opening of a, this beautiful organic rose, mm. wearing bondage gear. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's got the most incredible sensuality. Bondage gear, huh? What about some nice lingerie instead? Or that, a yeah. beautiful black negligee there or something go. that's, that's quite that's quite better. sophisticated. Because it's, it's not a nasty rose. Not at all. It's essential. This rose. is one of the most spectacular rose fragrances in the marketplace today, and it is now officially the global bestseller for the brand. Is that right? Well, there's, there's no surprise. There's no surprise. One thing that I read about, and tell me if I'm wrong, similar to a wine harvest, he harvests his rose, mm -hmm. and then whatever that rose harvest produces is what he produces when it comes. One hundred percent. So he won't add any other roses. No, 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 no. So no. it's his organic farm, organic roses. And that's what is created to make radical rose. As he did with love. his organic tuberose right. in French flower. French flower. This, that's my wife's favorite. And I'm telling you, when she wears it, the whole street is knows. I mean, that fragrance projects like nothing else. It's beautiful. It's just another one from, from the Matilda Premier. I love he, it. I love the way he's come back to really the artisanality of what he does mm. and his work in grass. It, it's quite... It's extraordinary. Michael and I have created a set of masterclasses online, on demand, so you can watch them whenever you want to. We did one for the Matier Premier. We've also done it for Creed and Zurjov and things of that nature. But if you're interested in those masterclasses, have a look below on the link. And it'll go straight to the Libertine Perfumery website and you can go ahead and book that. You can watch it at your leisure. You'll get the samples. You'll hear us talking. You'll hear the master explaining. Look, you're too kind, but it's I true. have to say. It's true, it's true, it's true. The next one is rose presented in a different way again. And here, we're focusing on rose with incense. In true Amwash style. In true Amwash style. And this is the brainchild of Bruno Jovanovac. Mm. And it's a magnificent Omani rose. Mm. It's rock rose. Right. This is so deep, so rich. A black incense mm, mm. that you smell through. There's a frankincense note that comes through. So the resonoids really play a very important role in bringing out almost the sweetness of rose in this case. Can you smell that sweetness? I can. It's almost like a Turkish rose delight sort of mm -hmm, scent, mm -hmm. but it's beautifully juxtaposed with this, this incredible dark incense. Th this fragrance here is my winter delight. 
I'm in smelling it now. It's beautiful. So I, I love wearing this over cool weather and it, yes. it radiates a warmth. This yes, one, it does. Yeah, it's not as pronounced as radical rose. No. The incense definitely plays a lot more part. Yes, absolutely. It, it's almost, um, I like the way you defined it as the Turkish delight. There's a sweetness of that, that wonderful rose. Yeah. It's almost like, and I'm sure many of you have seen it, it's like a rose petal marmalade. Yep, okay. Okay, where you've got that sort of glutinous, yep. jelly-like yep. sort of agglomeration of rose petals and the like. And that's what it takes me to. But then the incense just elevates it to a, a level that is extraordinary. If I compare the three. So, to start off with one Manuel. Very green, mm -hmm. slightly woody. Mm -hmm with a gentle rose coming through. And then that radical rose, classic rose, almost jammy-like, just divine. But that is classical rose, that's just. Mm -hmm. And then this beautiful incense rose. I'm telling you, for me, I, it, it's winter. It's this winter, yep. it's radiating warmth. What's your standout of the three? Oh, all three, I'm not even gonna, I'm telling you now, all three, all three. I, 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 so one Manuel is, is a new inclusion that, I, that I'm not as familiar with. Uh, Are so, you impressed though? Totally impressed. Totally. And, and again, I go back, if you're new to, as a man, if you're new to Rose, wanted to explore, then one Manuel would be a great entry level. Yeah. The green, the wood, yeah. the, the little bit of Rose that's in there. If, if you're a masculine, you know, not, not a masculine man, but sometimes some yeah. men think that they, they want a woody fragrance or they want something with aromatics in it. Yeah. So this is a nice introduction to, that, to the rose. Yep. Awesome. I do have a favorite. Oh, tell me, tell me. All right. Oh, yeah, radical. Radical rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Unbeatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now we're Vetiver. going to my favorite section. Why do you love green so much? Because you love green okay. in note. In... This is a very, very good question mm. and one that dates back to when I was quite young. Sweet scents and amberous woody scents generally don't work on my skin. And I think it's to do with acidity, right. heritage. You're already that. sweet enough. Well, no, I'm not sweet enough, and that's the problem. When I apply fragrances or, or spray fragrances like, you know, the amber, woodies, um, I just find that they're not overpowering, but they can sometimes acidify, for right. want of a better word. Right. And in some cases, almost become acrid mm. on my skin. So there's this underlying acidity that I find it really, it just, it, it, for me, very overbearing and unpleasant. Right. Whereas vetiver, the earthy greenness mm. of vetiver, sings on my skin. Right. I love the green category. Yeah. The green category in perfumery is probably, it's not a common fragrance family that people are drawn to. Yeah. Yeah. Why I love green, I love the vegetal quality of green. Right. I love the fact that they've been orchestrated with citrus and with the earthy woodiness of vetiver. Right. And it brings the, it makes the green sing. Right, right, it's right. It's just, I just find it a glorious family to work with. Now, the only one that I know in this collection is the Creed original vetiver. And that's what we should start with. Okay. Right. Because it's the freshest as yeah. well. Okay. So, the House of Creed, I'm sure all of you are aware, founded in 1760 by James Creed. He was a tailor that came from Leicester to London. The perfume gloves that he presented to King George III was his claim to fame. Mm. He, they didn't really start working on fragrance until the 1970s. So right. this is really a very recent phenomenon for right. the brand. Right. I love original yeah. vetiver. Yeah, yeah. I love the original Galan vetiver. Okay. And I haven't smelled it, so I don't know. However, mm. what I like about this vetiver, this is Java vetiver. It's right. very sweet. Mm. Unlike the drier dustiness of, say, a Haitian vetiver. Right, okay. This is really beautiful. 
And I love that they've added the bergamot, the mandarin, that beautiful citrus note up the top. Yes. To give it that wonderful clean. Yes. And then you've got the sophisticated smoky woodiness that mm. comes through very, very slowly with this fragrance. On the dry down. On the dry down. one correct. thing I find for me, I find that this one here, so this is one that I love wearing. I find that the opening is, is all the things you just said, that beautiful, vibrant, aromatic citrus component. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's ginger. Correct. And I, and I find the ginger gives it a whole different, actually, I, I just picked it up then. It gives it a zing. Just yes, a it nice certainly little... does. It brings life. Mm -hmm. There's a heat that ginger imbues within that, that original sort of very fresh, citric, acidic right. um, entry point. And the ginger adds the heat through it all. Right, right. And it... You're right, it, it opens it all up. It mm. becomes very, very vibrant. If you just get the citrus, it's a little bit familiar, mm -hmm. whereas all of a sudden the citrus mixed in with that ginger, it gives it a whole new element to it. Along with that, the earthiness of the, the vetiver, yeah. I find it's very masculine. Yeah, very, yeah. It's, it's a real, gorgeous. Yeah, it's a real it's masculine. It's a really right. good, stylish vetiver. Right. If you're a man that you, know, you love your suiting, yep. you want to be impeccably groomed, this is the fragrance. It I'd, is the most beautiful vetiver. I'd be curious to know if any women yes. wear original vetiver. It's a genderless fragrance. Vetiver is genderless. It's not exclusive to just one particular right. gender. Anyone can right. wear this fragrance successfully. Right. Well, well, McPherson loves vetiver by Galan. Oh, there you go. So she which, wore which that for many years. Which would be similar to this one. Absolutely. Bada bing, there you go. Now, I'm walking into territory that I, is unseen Let's to me. Let's touch mythic. Mise en cire. I cannot laud this brand enough because it is the brainchild of Alberto Morillas, one of the greatest perfumers of our time. Aqua di Gio, Daisy by Marc Jacobs. I can go on and on and on and on. In fact, if you combine the top 20 men and top 20 feminine fragrances together, his work comprises nearly 40% of those and most of them are in the top 10. Incredible. And you know what I love? That here's a perfumer who has more greatest hits than the Beatles. Yeah. But yet a lot of people don't. If you said Alberto Morillas, people go, I, I don't know who yeah, you're talking absolutely. about. Yeah, absolutely. Is he a, a Spanish chef, is he? So he was born in Sevilla. Mm. His father had to move to work in Geneva in Switzerland. Right. So this is where Misonzi, this is his own baby, his own niche project. Mm. He actually, uh, Marcello, started with candles before he produced fragrance. Right. But this is one of the most sublime vetivers. I like it a lot. In the marketplace. It is magnificent. It's mm -hmm. fresh. Mm -hmm. but you know what? Okay, so this one is ultra fresh. Yes, this so, is woody fresh. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, An earthier. The, the Maison Sur one? Correct. Absolutely, yeah. It's definitely earthier, but it has this, a different aromatic quality to it. Yes. That's why I wanted to put it on skin, because on card is nice. Can you also smell, you'll start to smell the sweetness of the vetiver coming through, mm. but there's also a tiny bit of patchouli that comes right, through as okay. well, and you get that sort of that very distinctive camphorous note of patchouli in there, mm. which gives it quite an interesting backdrop, almost like a, a, a peat water does in scotch. The same sort right. of approach. Funny, there's another, there's something else in here on which I'm trying to, I, I can't help myself. When I smell a fragrance, my brain instantly wants to start finding the note. But there's something in here that's making it really unique. I like vetiver in my fragrances. I haven't smelled something like this. It's with, it's the patchouli interaction. Really? Right. It, it adds, as I said, that peatiness, that camphorousness. Yeah, okay, okay. This is really good. It's magnificent. It's a very distinctive vetiver fragrance. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it mainstream vetiver. No, this not is at all. really off the beaten track. Yeah. At the moment, just so you know, aromatic vetiver is definitely in there. And you know what I love too? It doesn't have the classic, I'm guessing it has some citrus in the opening. Yes, it does. Well, it doesn't have that classic citrus orange lemon, you know, that you sometimes get. It has a brightness, but it's, it's something that's a little bit unpredictable. It was, oh, this, I, I nearly grabbed it. I'm telling you, my brain's trying to grab this note. Good, I'm not gonna <laughs> tell him, of course. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm gonna move on. This one here, I find it is a lot more masculine leaning. Correct. A lot more masculine. Leaning. Correct. 
So, again, a woman could wear it. What it let's Fragrance. face it, what is gender Wouldn't. in perfumery? I it's totally what agree. it's how it makes you feel totally and agree. how you like to smell. Totally agree. And we purposely did this, so we put rose, which traditionally is deemed as a feminine leaning yeah. sort of note, and then we grabbed vetiver, which is deemed as a more masculine leaning. But at the end of the day, it's whatever you whatever you enjoy wearing. Absolutely. That's what you should wear. Okay. And this is one of your favorites. Drum roll. Okay, okay. It best to last. Is it the best to last? What do you think? It's one of the best sellers in the Costume National range. Right. Costume National, ladies and gentlemen, was founded by Ennio Capazza, an Italian designer who was an understudy to Yoji Yamamoto in Tokyo. He came back, opened up in the 80s his own design house, and the V Monkeys, the group who created the beautiful fragrances juice box, were also responsible for creating these fragrances with master perfumers for Enyo Kapaza. Now you can see obviously the minimalist Japanese element in the packaging, but the raw materials are quite extraordinary because they're LMR raw materials, meaning they come from Laboratoire Monique Remy. And this is an offshoot of International Fragrances and Flavors, IFF. They are based in Graz and they work with naturals that come from fair traded and sustainable sources. Right. And the perfumer is the renowned Dominique Ropion. Oof, I love him. Very similar in stature to, you know, the likes Alberto. of Alberto of Morillas. Yep, yep, yep. Brilliant. This is cinnamon bark that right. you'll smell right. from Sri Lanka. Yep. A beautiful smoky vetiver. Mm. There's cardamom. Mm. Cardamom needs to be in this fragrance to cut through the mm. sweetness, the, the, that very sharp earthiness, right? But what an incredible balance. And it is a parfum. It's close to 30% concentration for $199. You know what I was going to say as Michael was, was sharing? It's incredible. Costume National, if you would like to explore niche perfumery, huh. this is a great place to begin. The lineup, the collection is exquisite. The fragrances are unique. And I'm smelling this and it's divine. Do you like that, it? That cin cinnamon bark. The cinnamon bark the cinnamon really bark makes it sing. Mm -hmm. And it you, brightens it a lot. You know, I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm, I'm not detecting the vetiver as much. So unlike... Correct. Unlike Mythic. Correct. Uh, the vetiver was there and the vetiver it's is there. It's very understated Marcello right. in this fragrance, How but it, it's there. Yeah, well, this one here, aromatic, spicy... And I'm going to say there's a little, there's an earthiness that's coming through, but it's yes. not a very pronounced vetiver earthy note that I'm getting. There's a sweetness in here too, though. Yes, the cardamom, mm. the cardamom and the, and the cinnamon bark work very well together. You know what I love? All three are different. Are very different, aren't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. You should be getting some of the vetiver now. Okay. If I loop back, so the Creed, classic, clean skin gentleman. Fresh. Fresh. Yep. This one here is a powerhouse when it comes to vetiver aromatic, but with a sort of a woody edge to it. I find it quite masculine. Yes, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And now this guy. This is very distinctive. That's this to me is almost color. after five or a winter right. day fragrance as well. I'd wear that with a black tie. It would be a superb fragrance to wear for an occasion like that. But niche perfumery at this price with the type, the quality of raw material that's been used and by who created it is quite extraordinary. And it's because they've pared back the packaging. It's all about that beautiful, polished, very clean, simple, linear design. And it's all about the ingredients. The, the juice, juice itself, boom, correct. Boom, I love it. Guys, ladies... Gentlemen, three really impressive fragrances if you love rose, very diverse. Three really impressive fragrances if you love vetiver, very diverse. All three of these are distinctly different. What I do love about these ones here is rose is still a very clear note in yes. all of these fragrances, whereas I find that the vetivers in here are very different. There's, Quite complex. Yeah, there's different elements to it. Yes, there is. If you love niche perfumery, Michael and I have done a range of masterclasses. They're on demand online, so you can watch them whenever you want. Go to the Libertine website. There will be links below. You can go ahead and book those. And listen to the master 
while you have this guy who loves perfumery, Libertine will send you the packs that have all the samples of the fragrances that we will be discussing. So you can join us as we discuss those fragrances. Thank you, Senor. Thank you so much and thank you all. So did you enjoy that? Absolutely. Yeah. I think this has been a real, a beautiful journey for me because each fragrance has its own distinctive signature. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity as well, it's Marcello. A, it's a pleasure to be with this man. He, uh, I enjoy his company, I enjoy his knowledge, I enjoy the listening to him and sharing all things niche perfumery. As I said, he's my sensei, so come on. I love him too. <laughs> Bye guys. Thank Thanks you. everyone. See you guys all in the next episode.